During studio sessions with younger or inexperienced musicians, my friend and music producer Misaki Lu would often be asked questions like, what do you think our chances are? Or do you think we can make it? And more often than not, he consistently responded with an intentionally cryptic piece of encouragement. It went pretty much like this, word for word. If you keep at it and stick with it, stay together as a band and keep making music, well, then you're going to be around for a long time. Now, often enough, the band would take that as a compliment, though it wasn't entirely intended to be. See, in the moment, what the band or the artist wanted to know, or hear at least, was that they were good enough right there, right then. And that because they were good enough right there and right then, they had a more secure and hopeful future. The thing is, like just about everyone, including me when I started recording, that young or inexperienced artist or band wasn't good enough to make it right there right then. Most of those artists or bands aren't around right now making music. They didn't make it long term, not the way they were dreaming to. And there's no shame in that. Very few do. But I'm pretty convinced that part of why so few are still at it, investing in their chosen discipline years down the line, is because it's so easy to become focused to the point of obsession with early success or shallow metrics like being good enough right now. Yes, there is something to be said for having talent for the thing I want to do. But more substantial than that, the strengths and the capacities that are necessary in order to make a career or a relationship or an organization or a movement or a dream work long term are only developed over time and in a commitment to my own process of becoming. Early in my religious training, there was a lot made of what was called the armor of God. In a letter written to a new religious conversion in Ephesus, the Apostle Paul encourages these Ephesians to put on what he called the armor of God, as one might do in preparation for a battle. So he talks about the evil of the world and the dark forces they'll be up against. And then he prescribes the wearing of things like truth and righteousness and peace and faith but not so that they would go out and win battle after battle and conquer the world around them with the fervor of young soldiers. No, instead, Paul prescribes the wearing of this armor, and this is from the letter itself, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. In other words, when it passes, will you still be here? And will you still be standing? At the time of this writing, I'm just a few days away from the release of what will be my fifth book overall, entitled It Is What You Make Of It. There are stories in the book from the past few years of my work, as well as from as long ago as high school or even my childhood. And the thing that binds these stories together is the perspective and the wisdom I have from where I am, which is to say who I am now looking back on who I was. See, I did what Masaki said to do. I stayed. I'm still here. And there simply isn't a singular victory or a success in the entirety of my career that means as much to me than to say, I'm still here. I'm still at it. And yes, uh, because I've been at it for this long, I'm better at what I do now than I've ever been at anything I've done previously. I'm more equipped because I'm more the person I need to be in order to do the work I want to do. Now, the day I'm writing this is also the one-year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, a moment in America's racial history that opened the door for a great many people to enter into the work of justice and reconciliation, many of them for the first time. It's a good work. It's a necessary work. It's also a difficult work in which victories and accomplishments and benchmarks can seem small at times insignificant and far too infrequent, which is to say, it is a work that can be deeply exhausting, particularly if I'm deriving my energies from achieving the next success required of the work instead of being focused on becoming the kind of person who does the work even in the face of disappointment. See, there was and is a very practical and lifelong wisdom in Masaki Lu's decision to not answer directly the question being asked of him in the studio. If you want to know if you're good enough right now, I'm not going to answer that question for you.
Because the real question is this, will you be here long enough to become the kind of person who does the kind of work that you want to do? In the park near my house is a series of trails that intersect a small creek in a few spots. And in the winter, that creek rises and it's almost impossible to cross at one location. So a few years ago, someone built a bridge over that spot. They saw a problem and they created a solution in order to address it. Then a week or so later, someone else tore it down. And then in response, the original builder took some of the broken pieces from the first bridge and used them to assemble a new bridge. And I think that's actually how life works and moves forward, which is why I wrote that story into my next book entitled, It Is What You Make Of It. 15 stories that push back against the kind of it is what it is thinking that keeps us from entering into the world around us and living fully. The book comes out on June 1st. You can pre-order it now. I hope you do.